The PGA Tour has been working toward its own elevated events for quite some time now in a bid to compete against LIV Golf, and now we finally have official confirmation of the exact tournaments that'll undergo this massive transformation by 2023. In today's video, we're going to talk about the Tour's big money championships and what Roy McIlroy's got to say about it. So without further ado, let's dive straight in. First off, PGA Tour confirms agreement for elevated events. The big takeaway from the PGA members' meeting from August was that they needed to do something to stop LIV Golf's onslaught. After all, the Saudi league's been on a roll and has been nabbing the tour's top talent left, right, and center. Tiger Woods was the one who stepped up back then to suggest the idea of elevated events. These were meant to be special championships with massive purses. On top of that, the proposal also included the fact that only top PGA pros would be able to compete in it. Sounds familiar, right? Well, yeah, that's because it's pretty much an exact copy of the Breakdown Circuit's own invitationals, except that it doesn't have teams. Still, it kind of gives us flashbacks to the mid-90s when the tour stole another one of Greg Norman's ideas to quell his efforts to compete against them. Since that initial announcement, though, we hadn't really heard much more about these elevated events until now. Yep, these four big purse events are finally set in stone as the PGA's just published an official statement. The official letter was sent to all members of the tour along with the tournament sponsors. Oh, and guess what? It looks like everyone's fully on board, so the association now basically got the green light to go full steam ahead with these cups for the upcoming season. Up next, which tournaments are a part of this quartet? We already knew these tournaments would be picked out of the already exciting catalog of PGA Tour events. Still, choosing only four out of more than a dozen cups can be a bit tricky, like imagine the back and forth between the association and all the organizers. We're sure everyone was chomping at the bid to transform themselves into elevated events. The ones that made it to the shortlist, though, were the WM Phoenix Open, RBC Heritage, Wells Fargo Championship, and the Travelers Championship. Now, regardless of anyone's personal preference, the tour's choices are definitely very fascinating, and we kind of want to see what went into the decision-making that excluded other events like, say, the Memorial Tournament or the Tour Championship. We mean, these two have more history and relevance than the four that have been chosen, right? Then again, these are perhaps way too important to be turned into guinea pigs for this new experiment. What's more, since only the top PG PGA members can compete in the elevated events, perhaps it's best to avoid more established cups. After all, you don't want to alienate a significant portion of your own competitors. Well, actually, scratch that, because guess what? The tour, for some reason, already considers those to be elevated events without the extra requirements. Yeah, we know, it's confusing. The circuit's commissioner, Jay Monahan, believes that he's now got 13 elevated events in total after adding these into the mix, and any top pro should be ready to compete in 16 tour events, the 13 that are already confirmed, and the three others of their own choosing. Not to mention, these are only valid for next year. The tour's been pretty weird about the messaging on these elevated events. For instance, they've said that other than the selection of the four venues for next year's elevated events, no other decisions have been made. Now, that doesn't quite make sense for a couple of reasons. First, surely they would have discussed these in detail and would have talked to all the organizers, their scheduling people, and the sponsors. Plus, we've already seen other information leading out over the past couple of months, so it's kind of strange that they're keeping their cards close to their chest at this point. That being said, there's still a tiny twist in the tale here. Apparently, the four tournaments that they've chosen aren't even permanent. Instead, these will only be elevated for the 2022-23 season, meaning that others will have another chance to make their case for the following year. At the same time, though, the PGA also refused to confirm whether they intend to rotate events over the coming years or not. Yep, again, it's almost as if they aren't sure about their own plans. Never in a million years would we have thought that the tour would have commitment issues, but here we are. To be fair to them, though, there's another big change coming up that they've got to look out for. Of course, we're talking about the switch back to a single calendar year season from 2024, which is likely to shake things up quite a bit. Let's look at the 2023 schedule for elevated events. The positioning of these four elevated events in the season is also super important. Why? Well, before they were given this extra boost, top pros had the opportunity to skip them and do something else, but with almost 20 million bucks on the line, no one would want to miss out on these events. This, in turn, will make for a crowded 2023 schedule for most of these PGA members. Oh, and we're talking about a golfing tournament almost every single week, especially in February and March. Let's start from the beginning, though. The WM Phoenix Open will be the first elevated event on the schedule, running from the 9th to the 12th of February. The following six weeks will then have four tournaments 
events packed in, most of which are important according to the tour. These include Genesis API, the Players' Championship, and of course, match play. But wait, it gets even crazier. Merely a week after the Masters in April, the tour's planning to hold its second new elevated event, the RBC Championship. Also, we've got to keep in mind that even the Masters tournament doesn't have much of a break before it. Thankfully, things start to slow down a bit, with Wells Fargo on May 4th, just a couple of weeks before the PGA Championship. And then, to round it all off, we've got the Travelers Championship in June, right after the U.S. Open. So basically, everything's going to be done and dusted by the time we get to the Memorial in July, just in time for the playoffs. What's more, the tour will discuss further strategies soon. Now, considering how hectic this schedule already is, it's not surprising that the tour hasn't had much of a chance to sit down and flesh it out more. That said, they've already got a date in mind to clear the rest of our questions up. According to the tour's chief tournaments officer, Andy Pazder, there's a PGA Tour policy board meeting scheduled for the second week of November where they'll discuss their plans for 2024. Not only will they try to space out the big events, but they're also looking into easing the 16 tournament requirement for top players. After all, athletes like Roy McIlroy and John Ram, who also compete on the DP World Tour, need some other way to confirm their positions too. So perhaps integration with the European tours on the cards too. Besides, they could always bring one of the autumn tournaments into the fray. Now for McElroy's defense of the PGA elevated events. The tour has been under fire a lot lately, especially from the rival contingent over at LIV Golf. Why? Well, they believe that these elevated events are a desperate attempt from Jay Monahan to remain relevant. In fact, Phil Mickelson went as far as to say that the PGA is on a downward spiral right now and that its efforts to compete against the Saudi League won't work out in the long run. McElroy, however, seems to have taken offense to that statement. After all, these four events are about to inject an extra $100 million into the circuit's prize pool. Plus, nothing's really pointing toward the tour's stagnation either. According to the Irishman, the tour's actually on the up right now, cause 95% of the talent's still in their ranks. In fact, if anything, it's Greg Norman who should be worried right now, cause anyone with a logical view of the game can see who's winning right now. Finally, McElroy blames LIV Golf for the sports downturn. Rory McElroy has been playing it safe for the past few months, trying to mend relationships with his former colleagues. But that doesn't mean anyone can come in and point fingers at the PGA Tour, so he had to step up and defend his organization. He believes that the LIV guys are being very bold by spreading all this propaganda against the Tour, and instead, they're the ones who have put the golf world in flux right now. Like, how can they even point fingers at someone else? Else right now. That being said, McElroy still chose to tone down his criticisms after this. Rather than going on a rant, he said that he understands why someone like Mickelson would have this position because you've got to defend your side. You've got to wonder though, with diplomatic statements like these, are we heading toward golfing peace? Let us know in the comments below. Also, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, and we'll see you in the next one.